<laughs> Welcome back to the Narrowband channel. My channel specifically deals with narrowband type astrophotography, which is a very specialized type of field. And then when I do one shot color or you know just RGB type photography, I use primarily Olympus cameras. I use it for wildlife, I use it for professionally in my career for video. And I am now trying out the Olympus EM1 Mark III as we speak, but I use these cameras for astrophotography a lot, okay? And I've been using Olympus cameras since the film days when OM cameras were the big deal and they were the essential camera to own for astrophotography as well. So as you all know though, JIP has recently purchased Olympus and this kind of marks a new chapter and I would like to give a wish list so to speak, you know, some things that I'd like to see change or features that I would like to see added. And that's what this video is going to primarily be about. First thing that I would like to request of Olympus, and this is a feature that can be completely done through software. And as a matter of fact, the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven different things that I'm going to suggest all can be done through software. This is called dithering, okay? And in astrophotography, we have a saying dither or die, okay? It's that important to astrophotography. Now, that's because. In astrophotography, we take calibration frames, okay, and calibration frames allow us to eliminate just about all noise, you know, completely eliminated. But there's still some noise left that we can't get rid of unless we do something called dithering. And dithering, and this, this last type of noise is, is called pattern noise by some. You know, it can also be banding in the sensor, okay, which banding, there is some banding in these newer 20 megapixel sensors. But let's say, you know, these are pixels here. You got four pixels in this particular case. And you take a picture, we move it over a pixel. And we take another picture, we move it up a pixel. We take another picture, we move it over a picture. And this is actually similar to the high res mode, okay? But the difference is that instead of trying to get more resolution, we're taking all of these images and then we stack them together, okay? And by stacking them together, with a move just a little bit, it doesn't blur it at all because we're still lining up based on the stars. Um, the stacking together eliminates all of that pattern noise. And it also eliminates any banding that's in the sensors, which, which is some, banding is something I've noticed in the newer sensors. So that's number one. So the way I take my astrophotos with Olympus cameras, and Olympus makes this very easy, is there's a built-in intervalometer in the camera, which allows you to take one picture after another, after another, after another. Right now, we're limited to a 60 second exposure. And that, that kind of limits you to really the brighter objects in the sky. And 60 seconds is kind of short, okay? I would love to be able to take two, three, even 10 minute exposures if possible. Uh, I don't know if that would be something that we could enable deeper in the menu systems or what, but just the ability to take longer exposures. The next thing I would like to see is the ability to know what the temperature is of the camera. Right now, right now I use this thing. This is a heat gun I measure off the back, and I'm constantly going out to the camera, checking the temperature of the camera, writing it down, writing what time that was, and that's just a huge nuisance, okay? Because I have to do it, though, in order to align the temperature of my light frames, which are taken on the stars, to my dark frames, which I take later on, or at different times, and so they can get them the same temperature because they have to be the same temperature in order for that dark frame calibration to subtract the, the correct amount of thermal noise. Now I know that Olympus, there is a sensor in these cameras that detects what the temperature is and I know it is recorded. It's recorded in the EM1 Mark I, which we're recording on right now, uh, the Mark II, the Mark III, and I know the EM1X actually shows you in the menu somewhere where the temperature is. And that would just be nice to have that in really all of these cameras and also to have it more easily viewable. And this, this brings me up to my next, my next request here. This is request number four, okay? In the Olympus Viewer software, not only would it be nice to see the temperature EXIF data in the EXIF panel, but it would also be really nice if we could sort pictures. So let's say if I take a pictures through the night, you know, and temperatures start at 50 degrees Fahrenheit and they go down to, let's say, 42 degrees Fahrenheit, I would be able to see the progression of the temperatures all through the night and then I could, I could sort them into batches. And then I could do dark, dark frame calibrations in batches 
and subtract the dark noise in a much, much more accurate way. The next thing I want to see on here, so when you're doing manual focusing, especially with a telescope, um, it would be really nice to see the magnification option. Right now it's limited to 14x, okay? I would like to see a magnification option that goes all the way up to 30x, or maybe even a little more than that. That way, uh, when I when I bring up a star in here, I mean, I can really, really see whether or not that star is in, sh is in focus or not. And ideally, you want to focus on the smallest star that you can detect because that will give you the best focus without using a Batonoff mask. So, 30x magnification on the magnification assist. That's another request of mine. So, item number six on my wish list is they've already done this somewhat with the Olympus iOS Share app, which allows you to remotely control the camera. And that's a cool feature, but too, by the way, if you haven't tried that out. What they've done is they've allowed you to, in the preferences, turn the screen red, okay? Which is nice, because it saves your night vision. But I would also like to see that feature extended to the camera, so that the LCD screen and also the EVF could be changed to a completely red tint, and that would save our night vision immensely. And just a nice little option to have out there. Now, the next thing I want to see, this is item number seven, is when we're doing planetary photography, okay, I typically use a 4,000 millimeter focal length telescope, okay, and sometimes I even use a 2 or 3x teleconverter on top of that. Some people use a 5x teleconverter on top of that. But planetary photography, Olympus is unique here, okay, because you can do 60 frames per second with these cameras. You can't do that with very many cameras. I, actually, I can't think of any other cameras that can do that. That allows you to do planetary photography because what we do is we take lots and lots and lots of pictures and JPEGs and we stack them together and it gives us a really sharp image. Okay, it really allows you to cut through the atmosphere and average out all the disturbances that are in the atmosphere. And what I would like to see is the ability to have a 2, 3, and 4x digital teleconverter as an option in the menus. And also, with the teleconverters, I think right now, if you use the digital teleconverter, it saves all the pixels around it as well. It just shows you a little white box, you know, this is where it was cropped into. I would like to be able to move that box around, and I would like to have the option that we don't keep any of the pixels around it, okay? And that would decrease the file size immensely and really speed up processing um, planetary images because when you're trying to stack six or seven thousand pictures you know it, it becomes pretty intensive you know especially with a 20 megapixel camera all right so this is item number eight on my list and this is actually a really big one this doesn't have anything to do with astrophotography so i was thinking to myself it's like you know cameras slrs they're losing market share they're losing market share okay and I noticed that even I myself often, even though I carry this camera with me everywhere, I take it to work, it's always in the car with me, it's always at the house, it's always ready to go. I actually have three or four cameras scattered around the house for different things. And yet, I still do not often grab this camera to take a picture. Often I use my phone. And the reason why is because of the speed with which I can get the picture from my phone to the medium of which I share it, okay? And the younger people, like myself, and also these new generations that are coming out, they want to be able to share their pictures on Hulu, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. They want to be able to do it instantly. Right now, I have to open the camera, take the card out, I have to stick it in my laptop or go find a dongle, then stick it in my laptop, then I download it into Olympus Viewer, then I export it to my desktop, and then I put it on Facebook, okay? And that's a lot of work, okay? That takes way too long. These cameras, there's no reason why these cameras can't function essentially just like an iPod Touch or maybe an iPad, okay? You know, they've got a built-in Wi-Fi card and then they got Bluetooth in it too. There's no reason why I can't hook up to my, my network at home or at work and from this camera, be able to actually share and post pictures 
right to my Instagram feed, right from the camera, okay? That would just be, I think, revolutionary and would really capture the interest of younger people. Also, like, like let's say I'm at a wedding, you know, and I'm shooting some shots and, you know, currently, you know, if I, if I get a really awesome picture that I want to share right away with maybe, like, the whole wedding party through, you know, the, the phones that they're all doing underneath the, the, the counter, so to speak, um, I have to wait until the end of the wedding and stick it on the laptop and go through the whole process. Whereas if I could just directly share it instantly, you know, you would just have more instant gratification, you know. So the ability to make maybe have apps that are loaded on here, like have an Instagram app, have a Facebook app so that I could I could actually type up um, a status here on the screen because you know, it's a touch screen and then like, you know, or a comment about my picture and then just directly post it right on there instantly. So that and that's a. Big thing. I really, really emphasize that one. <laughs> and the last thing I want to emphasize is the artificial shallow depth of field, like you see in iPhones. Okay, so Apple's been doing this for a while now. Like recently, my wife sent me a picture of our son, and it was an awesome picture. I was like, "Oh, are you are you using my camera right now? One of my SLRs that I left at home?" And she's like, "No, I took that with my new iPhone X." And and I did some research and everything, and, and Apple now have software where they can look at the depth of field of an image okay and they can use software to actually exaggerate the depth of field make it look like it's shallower and that i think is something that would steal a lot of thunder from these 35 millimeter full frame weirdos who think that you have to have a full frame camera in order to get shallow depth of field okay and so introduce some sort of software that will allow you to digitally increase the depth of field in your image, kind of like you see in the iPhone. That's, uh, that's my last software request. All right, now we're moving into hardware now. These are my hardware suggestions, which these would have to be introduced into a new camera, obviously. So with the EM1X, they had like a heat tube, which was a really neat feature. And I, I like it, caught my eye instantly but I haven't gotten one yet to try. I will, I will soon. But I want to really emphasize something, temperature. Temperature is becoming extremely important in today's cameras, especially with video, which I do at work, and also with, uh, with astrophotography, okay? The colder your camera is, the less noise it will have, okay? You want to eliminate noise? Get the sensor colder. Because thermal noise is, is actually a big issue. Now this camera right here, this is actually a dedicated camera, okay? And this has built into it a Peltier cooler, is it called? It's actually attached to the back of the of the chip that's in here, the CMOS chip that's in it, and it pulls the heat off the sensor and it dissipates it through this heat sink here. And it would actually be really nice to see that built into a future Olympus camera. Now I know that might be tough with the smaller um bodies and stuff but i think there's enough room in an e1 and i know this camera right here this has got a 40 degree celsius window this thing can lower the temperature 40 degrees celsius that's actually a lot i wouldn't ask for that much i mean really if this thing could lower the cam the camera's temperature five degrees celsius or 10 degrees celsius that would be just fantastic and also because you could keep the temperature at the same level you know throughout the night so and, and that would just be really really big for calibration frames and i tell you what if you put that into a camera you know, you're gonna have a lot of people buying cameras from olympus for astrophotography and also the video guys are really going to find that desirable because it would be it would be just nice because you shoot video longer especially high resolutions and, you know some places like this back here is very flat and smooth right now. I, would, I don't know, put up like a micro grid in it or something like that so that it would dissipate heat faster or uh, or maybe put like some sort of I don't know, peltier cooler in there that would at least lower the temperature 10 degrees. You know, who knows? You might be able to get, do more than that. The, uh, the engineers at Olympus I know are pretty talented. So, and that, that kind of brings up another thing is, I know you haven't designed a new battery grip for the EM1 Mark III, but, uh, but if you ever do, um, some suggestions that I would have is, number one, like, like the EM1X, I would like to see these two buttons on the battery grip as well. And also I would like to see the joystick 
on here. But uh, if you do put a peltier cooler in like future cameras, maybe have some way that this thing connects to the bottom of it and it kind of transfers a lot of that heat into the battery grip and kind of dissipates it that way. So like the battery grip could actually be, and it would actually, this would actually kind of get more people to buy battery grips because um, they would have, they would see more of a need to like buy it because it would cool the camera more, so to speak. Like let's say just the camera itself gives you a five degree window that you can drop the temperature by. But if you, if you add a battery grip to it, well then that brings it up to maybe 10 or even 15 degrees Celsius that the camera can control its temperature. The next thing on my wish list, of course, is the viewfinder. I would like to see a higher resolution viewfinder. The reason why I never upgraded from the E1.1 to the E1 Mark II was actually because of the viewfinder. But now that I'm kind of back into astrophotography again, I, I need the new sensor, so I got one. But yeah, a new higher resolution viewfinder, I just... Recently, I had my old Olympus OM-1 out, and I was just looking through the viewfinder of that thing, and it's so big and gorgeous. It would just, it would be nice to have that kind of a field of view inside that viewfinder again. And then the next thing I want to talk about is the LCD screen. So the LCD screen that Olympus has been using is, it's the same one they've been using for 10 years now. Um, and I would just really like to see it not bigger, like you could use the same footprint, same size, but I've measured this from corner to corner, and I think you could fit a three and a half inch screen on here. And that would be really nice, especially if you put apps in here to share directly to the internet, your pictures and stuff. Having a bigger screen for like tapping on a keyboard or whatnot. And, and also a, a better touch sensitivity surface, you know, because I know this, this, this sensor that's on the screen is it's not that great. It's, it's good, but it's not that great. So that's my wish for a, a bigger, brighter, higher quality, lower juice sucking from the battery type LCD screen, one of these new OLED screens or something like that. You know, steal one from a phone or something like that. The next thing I want to talk about is, and this would require some engineering in the, the sensor itself, okay? And that is the ability to track a star. So this, this would be really big for me in astrophotography and anybody in astrophotography. Because right now, guiding, you've got to guide uh, with a separate telescope, okay, that's mounted to the same fixed mount in order to get really good pictures in order to take long exposures. But if you had, like, let's say this was the sensor, okay, let's say you had maybe a little tiny sensor right there that, you know, was within the image circle, okay, of four thirds or maybe up here or something like that. And that sensor separately reads things. It could, it could pick a star and watch it and actually move the sensor and track the sky as it moves, okay? And compensate for any errors. And I would want to have two different modes for this. One would be a mode where the camera is just on a tripod. And the other one would be a mode where the camera is like it's like on a big mount, okay? The big big telescope mounts that are equatorial that line up with the polar north star. They're mechanically not perfect, and so you have to kind of correct a little bit. And this little sensor could like make corrections for that. And you would essentially have auto guiding built within the camera and, and this would make astrophotography for for anybody and really really easy you know it would it would open the oppor it would open up to them the opportunity to take very long exposures which are necessary in astrophotography and it's so hard to get a long exposure with nice round stars without auto guiding so so that would be that would be one of my wishes and that of course would you know require some engineering in the new in the new chip whatever that Olympus uses now, another thing that I think would be really cool is if, is, if, is if Sony refuses to make for you a micro four third sensor, you, know, you could always take a CMOS sensor and, and create like a multi aspect type sensor. Okay, where like when we're shooting 1080 HD, okay, or actually 4K or 8K, where the sensor is actually a little bit bigger than the image circle, but we'd have like this section here that could come out and we could actually capture a uh, six by 19 aspect ratio 
Because right now, if we crop it down to six by nineteen within a four third sensor, we lose we lose some of the image circle. Okay, we lose some resolution of the lens. But by having maybe the sensor go out a little bit further, when we're doing six by nineteen aspect ratio, you know, we don't we don't lose any of that. And then also like for like a uh, maybe like a square option, so that you could shoot like a square picture, and still use the full radius of the image circle but without any loss of resolution. The next hardware thing that I would like to see is increased hydrogen sensitivity to the sensor. Now, I can show you how to do this. So most of the time, you don't want, let, let's, let's draw up, okay? This is your infrared end of the spectrum, and this is your ultraviolet, okay, your UV, okay? Typically, sensors, CCD sensors and CMOS sensors can see past these points. But we want to cut them off because if we don't cut them off, it'll make the image blurry or it can make it difficult for us to like, get good color theory. And a lot of these um, uh, UV IR cut filters that are put on SLRs, they kind of have like a hump that, that looks like this, okay? And they're kind of round. They're big in the middle because that's the green area and there's lots of green light. And, and they're very, very weak in the red. So like, let's say this section right here is the red area. You know, they're, usually they're, there's a lot being cut off. And right here, near the end of the spectrum, there's this spike, okay, in the visual spectrum that in astrophotography is extremely important. It's called the hydrogen spectrum. And at hydrogen, okay, almost 90% of what's in the sky is hydrogen. And most, most cameras can't really see it. You know, they're, they're only seeing maybe 30 or 40% of that. But you wouldn't want to make your, your spectrum look like this because then you get all sorts of weird color issues. So this is my idea. My idea would be to make, to make an IR cut filter that not only has this curve to it, but right here where the hydrogen is, it's got a little blip that comes up and then goes back down so that the hydrogen can pass through. But you know, there's no hydrogen in the daytime, you know, so it wouldn't really mess too much with color. And that would be a great way to make a camera that'd be kind of universal, that people in astrophotography would absolutely love to use it, and people in daytime photography would absolutely love to use it because of good color. All right, so the last two things that I want to talk about, these are feature requests and these these could have implications for daytime photography. And these, by the way, would be something that Olympus could do that the, man, that the competition cannot do. Okay. Canon, Nikon, Sony, all of their 35 millimeter sensor mounts, they're really close to the lens. Okay, Olympus is kind of smart in that they left a little bit more back focus in there. And that's where this comes in. So I would love to see the ability to actually tilt the sensor, okay? And you could actually control this feature through the joystick. And what tilting the sensor, you know, just like the old fashioned pan tilt type cameras, you know, it could give you like out of focus and in focus type uh, effects that, you know, would be very unique. And, you know, they're very artsy, you know, art people would, would be all over this kind of thing. And I think you, I don't know, I don't think you can, you can't do it with the current cameras, but with uh, the extra back focus that the four thirds system has in it, I think you have more room to be able to, to tilt and shift, so to speak, the sensor around in ways um, to kind of create these portions of the picture that are in focus. And then like, so like things far away on the right side would be in focus and things really close on the left side of the picture would be in focus that kind of thing, you know, that would be an Olympus specialty that, you know, the other cameras would not be able to duplicate because in order for them to duplicate it, they would have to move the sensor so much further and there just isn't enough room in, in those cameras that they're making. So, so that's another cool thing. I think that would be like an Olympus specialty that, you know, other camera companies will not be able to knock that off. And then the last thing of all would be like focusing by moving the sensor. Okay. So, I know Contax many years ago they had a they had a camera they came out with where the all the guts in the camera actually moved forwards and backwards. 
you know, I'm not advocating for that. But it would like it would be nice to see, along with that ability to tilt the sensor, the ability to move the sensor forwards and backwards by like a millimeter or two. That way, like let's say when I have this camera hooked up to a telescope, okay, I could with a manual focus of the rack and pin and focuser get the camera pretty darn close to focus, okay, and then I could go to Starry Sky Autofocuser, hit the AEL button, and then the sensor would actually move and finish off the focus. It'd get it perfect. Okay, maybe even be able to tilt it and so forth so that the stars and all portions of the image look perfect. You know, that would be a great feature. I, I know a lot of astrophotographers would be all over that. And also it would be it would be cool because maybe throughout the night it could, you know, check focus every once in a while because, you know, telescope tubes, they're big and they're long and as they shrink and swell due to changes in temperature, um, focus can shift on you a little bit and having the ability to kind of move the, the sensor just a little bit back and forth, that would, uh, that would basically cancel all of that out. All right, I know I said 11 items, you know, things that I'd like to see Olympus introduce. However, I remembered one more as I was editing this video. So what I would love to see is the ability to use the gyroscope sensors in the camera. And I know the gyros are really, really good. They're so good, in fact, that they can actually detect the rotation of the Earth, uh, which was something that I, it was an article about, and well, I think it was Deep Review or something like that. But uh, those gyros being as sensitive as they are, perhaps this is possible. I don't know. Engineers at Olympus, you tell me. Could we do stereo 3D? Bye. Let's say you would take a picture, and in stereo 3D mode, the camera would then, using the gyro sensors, tell you how far to move, and then even kind of have like arrows in the screen that would kind of like help you realign back up, and also perhaps use the, the sensor shift to kind of like lock on to the same position, and then take another photo, and therefore get the two panels that you need to do stereo 3D images. And then you'd only need one camera to do a stereo 3D image. I think that would be kind of something that only Olympus could introduce because I know their gyros are kind of better than anybody else's. And also, like, you know, you could use the, you know, based on how far away an object is focused, you know, the camera would kind of then be able to figure out, you know, kind of how far do you need to move? Do you need to move 18 inches? Do you need to move 6 inches? Uh, do I need to move 2 feet? Okay, in order to create a stereo 3D image. Because stereo 3D images, true stereo 3D images, are really neat to look at. All right, I, I've got one more thing, and I know I said I've got one more thing once before, but I promise you this is the last one, for the software at least. Um, Olympus came out with their neutral density filter, which is digital for the EM13 and the EM1X. EM13, Mark III, here we go. And that th works by taking a series of photos, and it adds to the picture only pixels that are changing. Okay, and so let's say if you're taking a picture of a waterfall, you know, it, it sees that it has a canvas of pixels and those are not changing, but then it sees that there are, there's motion in certain areas and it gradually adds and adds and adds to the picture those pixels that are changing, all right? And this creates like a neutral density effect. That's like an additive type of neutral density. What I'd like to see is something, I, I think of it as being like kind of subtractive neutral density. So, what it would do is, let's say, imagine for yourself if you were taking a picture of Grand Central Station. All right. It's full of people, you set your camera up on a tripod, and you start your long exposure. What the subtractive neutral density would do is instead of adding pixels, it would look for pixels that are changing, and it would subtract those from the image. In other words, it would only keep pixels that have remained stationary for either a whole bunch of frames or maybe the majority of frames. And what this would eventually do is it would de-people an area, okay? It would remove all the, the motion or the moving people from the image. And it would only keep those things that are absolutely stationary, such as the building, the building, excuse me, and everything around it that's, you know, structure-based. And so what this would do is give you, you know, a people list photo. And I would see this as being a very useful feature in places like crowded cities, let's say a company wants to get a picture of the front of their building and, you know, other, th other than having to like block it off and everything, you could just use this neutral density filter and it would de-people it automatically and digitally and you wouldn't have to like, 
you know, stop traffic or something like that in order to get a picture of that object without anything blocking it or in the way. So, so those are all of my ideas. Uh, I tell you what, I lost lots of sleep. There were like three nights in a row where I was thinking about all these different ideas that I had and I couldn't get to sleep for like the whole night basically for three nights in a row. I was very sleep deprived that week. But yeah, I was really excited to bring you all these different ideas. I hope you like them. Um, if you have ideas of your own, share them in the comments bef below. And uh, hopefully Olympus, you see this. And I hope this gives you some great ideas. And uh, I wish Olympus the best as they transition to the new, the new ownership and everything. I know I'm certainly enthusiastic about the future of Olympus. And uh, I'm really encouraged by the Olympus EM1 Mark III that I have here. It has been, you know, a, a truly mind-blowing camera, to say the least. All right, if you like this video, subscribe and uh, stay tuned. This is the Neurobatten channel.